The Bud Company was a 20th century metal fabricator, a major supplier of body components to the automobile industry, and a manufacturer of stainless steel passenger rail cars, airframes, missile and space vehicles, and various defense products. Bud was founded in 1912 in Philadelphia by Edward G. Bud, whose fame came from his development of the first all steel automobile bodies in 1913 and, in the 1930s, his company's invention of the shot weld technique for joining pieces of stainless steel without damaging its anti-corrosion properties. Bud Company became part of Bud Thyssen in 1978 and in 1999 a part of Tussenkrupp Bud. Body and chassis operations were sold to Martinrea International in 2006. No longer an operating company, Bud filed for bankruptcy in 2014. It currently exists to provide benefits to its retirees. Topic: Automobiles. Edward G. Bard developed the first all-steel automobile bodies. His first major supporters were the Dodge brothers. Following discussions which began in 1913, the brothers purchased from Bud 70,000 all-steel open touring bodies in 1916. They were soon followed by an all-steel Dodge sedan. Bud Company jointly founded and from 1926 to 1936 held an interest in the Press Steel Company of Great Britain Limited Cowley, England, which built bodies for Morris Motors and others, and Ambi Bud Germany, which supplied Adler, Audi, BMW, Nag and Wanderer, and earned royalties from Bliss who built bodies for Citroen and Ford of Britain. The Bud Company also created the first safety two-piece truck wheel, used extensively in World War II, and also built truck cargo bodies for the U.S. military. Following the introduction of the unibody, Citroen Traction Avant in 1934 using Bud technology, Bud worked in 1940 with Nash Motors on the development and production of North America's first mass-produced unibody passenger vehicle, the Nash 600. In the mid-1980s, Bud's plastics division introduced sheet molding compound, a reinforced plastic in sheet form, suitable for stamping out body panels in much the same way, and as quickly as sheet metal equivalents are made. The Pontiac Fiero has some exterior SMC body parts manufactured by Bud Plastics, such as quarter panels, roof skin, headlamp covers, and trunk decolid. Topic: Railroads. Topic: Passenger cars. From the 1930s until 1987, the Bud Company was a leading manufacturer of stainless steel streamlined passenger rolling stock for a number of railroads. Topic. Early years After briefly dabbling with French Michelin rubber tired technology, Michelins, and the Silver Slipper, they built the Pioneer Zephyr for the Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy Railroad in 1934, and thousands of streamlined lightweight stainless steel passenger cars for new trains in the U.S. in the 1930s and 1980s. In 1949, Bud built 10 prototype stainless steel R11 subway cars for the New York Board of Transportation. These were intended for the Second Avenue subway. In the late 1940s, the Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy Railroad was seeking a way to increase capacity on commuter trains serving Chicago, Illinois, without having to add more cars to handle the increasing number of commuters. The problem faced by the Burlington route was that its main terminal in Chicago, Chicago Union Station, charged the railroads serving it by the length of each train, and the Burlington wanted to avoid such charges. Because of the line's satisfaction with Bud's products, they approached Bud seeking a solution. Bud proposed to build coaches that were taller than the typical lightweight passenger car while keeping the streamlined car's length of 85 feet, with the cars having a capacity 50% greater than previous commuter cars. To address the issue of the conductor collecting tickets without having to climb stairs, the upper level was designed with its center portion open so that the conductor could reach the tickets from upper level passengers. 
Two rows of individual seats, one on each side of the car, provided the increase in seating capacity. The unique design of the upper level's open center section led to the cars being called gallery cars. Burlington approved the design and ordered 30 cars. These cars, built as Bud Lot 9679-041, were delivered between August 1950 and January 1951 and not only marked a change in how the commuters were handled but also were the first cars in commuter service to have air conditioning. The Burlington retrofitted its earlier cars with air conditioning as well, once the new cars had entered service. With the first of the new commuter cars in service on the Burlington, the next railroad to approach Bud to design a new type of car with a greater seating capacity while also improving the accommodations for coach passengers was the Atchison, Topeka and Santa Fe Railway. The Santa Fe was searching for a better design for its long-distance passenger trains and, with the design of the Burlington coaches in mind, Bud set out to create a similar passenger car design to meet the Santa Fe's needs. In September 1952, the Santa Fe placed an order for two two-level prototypes, Bud's Lot 9679-129. These, carrying the numbers 526 and 527, were delivered in July 1954, at which time both were placed into service for evaluation. These two prototypes had seating on the both levels, stairs on one end to provide access to single-level cars, a stairway at the center of the car for access to toilets on the lower level, as well as the door in the side of the car for embarking and departing passengers. This lower floor also contained various mechanical and pneumatic equipment that otherwise would be mounted below the floors of single-level cars. With the two high-level prototypes in service and proving to not only meet the needs of line but also being popular with passengers who were afforded a much better view of the scenery from the upper level, the Santa Fe again approached Bud with the idea of building additional two-level cars, this time in five different configurations, step-down coaches like the two prototype cars, convertible coaches which could have one end of the car converted from the high level on both ends to a step-down car as needed, coaches with both ends of the car having the end door at the upper level's height to provide access to adjoining passenger cars, dining cars and lounge cars with kitchens on the lower level which featured a partial glassed in roof similar to the big dome lounge cars that were also built by Bud and delivered around the time the prototype high level cars were built. The order for additional cars was placed in March 1955 for 1068 seat step down coaches delivered between December 1955 and January 1956 and numbered 528 to 537. 2572 seat high level coaches delivered between January and April 1956 numbered 700 to 724. 660 seat bar, lounge, news stand which also had a 26 seat lounge in the lower level delivered delivered between May and June 1956 and 680-seat dining cars delivered between June and August 1956 numbered 650 to 655. With these cars delivered the Santa Fe re-equipped the El Capitan, the only coach train operated between Chicago and Los Angeles and also had some of the high-level coaches being assigned to the Chicago Galveston, Texas Texas Chief. An additional 12 step-down coaches, numbered 538 to 549, and 12 convertible coaches, numbered 725 to 736, which were ordered in November 1962 and delivered between December 1963 and April 1964. Topic later years Bud continued to build gallery passenger cars for Chicago area commuter service on the Burlington route and Burlington Northern after the merger, Rock Island, and Milwaukee Road lines during the 1960s and 1970s. Most of these cars are still in service on today's Metro routes. What is more, the Santa Fe high level cars were the inspiration for the Amtrak Superliner and Superliner II, which ply the rails of Amtrak on many different routes even today, though they were not a product of Bud. Stainless steel Bud cars originally built for the Canadian Pacific Railway's 1955 train, the Canadian, are still in service with Via Rail Canada. 
Since 1951 two formations of six bud cars operated by Ferrobares have run a weekly service called El Mar Platense from Buenos Aires to the ocean side city of Mar del Plata in Buenos Aires Province, Argentina. The cars were originally built for the Chesapeake and Ohio Railroad. Bud patented processes and designs were also used in Brazil by Mafisa, France and Belgium after World War II to construct SNCF electric-powered multiple unit cars, push-pull suburban trainsets, wagons lits CIWL, sleeping cars and even SNCF Class 240100 a small class of SNCF and SNCB4 current six-axle high-speed electric locomotives for Trans-European Express service between Paris, Brussels and and Amsterdam and SNCB Class 56 EMU. In Japan Tokyo Car Corporation became the licensee of the BUD process and made the stainless steel commuter cars like Series 7000 of Tokyo Line. Mafisa continued to manufacture cars based on BUD designs with 38 cars being built for Virginia Rail Express between 1990 and 1992, some now at Shore Line East. Canadian Vickers and AVCO built cars and incomplete kit shells for GE under BUD license, including the 1980 PATCO Series 2 cars, Metro North M2 Cosmopolitan and the Arrow 2, 3, Silverliner IV Moose. BUD also issued a license to Australian manufacturer Commonwealth Engineering in Sydney where BUD's stainless steel technology was used between the late 1950s and 1989 to build a variety of projects including the monocoque self-steer V-set double-decker into urban electric multiple units considered by many to be one of the world's most advanced double-decker design. BUD's extensive research into the use of stainless steel in rail carriage design and construction methodology carries on today in consulting businesses like Bay Rail. Topic rail diesel car In 1949, BUD introduced the Rail Diesel Car RDC, a stainless steel self-propelled train in one car which expanded rail service on lightly populated railway lines and provided an adaptable car for suburban commuter service. More than 300 RDCs were built, and some are still in service in Canada, the United States, Australia, Cuba and Saudi Arabia, with similar but shorter cars also being built under license by Mafisa in Brazil, which used the Bud Pioneer construction methods that the company designed and implemented in 1956 on some of the later commuter cars, such as the Milwaukee Road Gallery cars that operated out of Chicago as well as electric multiple unit high-speed cars that operated operated between Washington, D.C. and New York City. The final few RDC cars were built by Canadian Car and Foundry under license from BUD. Electric multiple units In the late 1950s, BUD built the prototype Pioneer 3. When redesigned and outfitted with electrical propulsion and end cabs as EMU coaches, six were purchased by the Pennsylvania Railroad who originally intended them for medium distance use in PRR's electrified territory. In 1963 they became known as Silverliner I cars when their use was supplemented by the new Silverliner II cars, which used an improved Pioneer III body, and which were placed into Philadelphia area commuter rail service on the PRR and Reading Company lines. Bud was contracted in 1966 by the PRR and the U.S. Department of Commerce's Office of High-Speed Ground Transportation prior to the establishment of USDOT to build the original Metroliner multiple unit cars for luxury high-speed service on the Northeast Corridor. The 50 original Metroliners were delivered in 1967-69. to 69. An additional 11 Metroliner coaches were built for SEPTA, but were not accepted for service until 1972 under Amtrak. The Metroliners have been either retired, rebuilt into coaches without the cabs, or depowered and used as cab cars. The Silverliner two cars had a top speed of 90 miles per hour, 140 kilometers per hour, but ran at up to 100 miles per hour, 160 kilometers per hour when the PRR used them for Philadelphia-Harrisburg service. 
The Metroliner Emu cars operated at 110 to 125 miles per hour, 201 kilometers per hour, but every car was tested up to at least 160 miles per hour, 260 kilometers per hour, although breakdowns in the system led Amtrak to derate them to 90 miles per hour, 140 kilometers per hour. Since their retirement from regular service, Amtrak has used the Metroliner Emu coaches as cab coaches on various services. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Subway cars. In 1960, Bud manufactured the first stainless steel production subway cars for Philadelphia's Market Frankfurt line. 270 M3 cars were jointly owned by the City of Philadelphia and the Philadelphia Transportation Company now Southeastern Pennsylvania Transportation Authority. Some rail enthusiasts nicknamed the cars, Almond Joys, because the four hump-shaped ventilators on the roof evoked the Almond Joy candy bar. There were 46 single units and 112 married pairs. The pairs were a mixed marriage. Because the odd-numbered car came with General Electric motors and equipment and was permanently coupled to the even-numbered car, which had Westinghouse motors and equipment. Two cars in this fleet were air-conditioned. These cars were replaced with more modern, air-conditioned M4 units from 1997 to 1999. Some cars were transferred to the Norristown high-speed line in the early 1990s. The cars had to be re-trucked, because the Norristown line is standard gauge 4 feet 8 and a half, while the Market Frankfurt line is broad gauge 5 feet 2 and a half. Industrial historian Jonathan Feldman has concluded that Bud, along with other old line suppliers of subway cars, lacked advanced systems integration know-how and the skills required to manage complex electrical systems and electronics. Each of these firms had built railroad and subway cars, but modern subway cars became increasingly complicated. Like aircraft and automobiles, they became platforms for electronics. Topic: <laughs> Transportation innovations. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Aviation. In 1930, the company made its first foray into the aviation industry by signing contracts to manufacture aircraft wheels and stainless steel wing ribs. Ania Bossi joined the company as the head of stainless steel research to supervise the design and construction of the four-seat biplane amphibian aircraft Bud BB-1 Pioneer. It was the first aircraft with a structure built out of stainless steel. This was the first aircraft for the Bud Company, and it made its first flight in 1931. Built under restricted license NR749, its design utilized concepts developed for the Savoia Marchetti S56 and was powered by a single 210 horsepower, 160 kilowatts Kinner C55 cylinder radial engine. The stainless steel construction process for the BB1 was patented in 1942. At the time, stainless steel was not considered practical, and only one BB-1 was built. It logged about 1,000 flying hours while touring the United States and Europe. In 1934, this plane was stripped of its fabric covering and its lower wing, and was mounted outside the Franklin Institute in Philadelphia, where it remains to this day as the longest continuous display of any airplane. The plane has been memorialized in the children's book Spirited Philadelphia Adventure by Deirdre Camino. During World War II, Bud designed and built the RB 1 Conestoga transport airplane for the United States Navy, using much stainless steel in place of aluminum. Only 25 were built, but, after the war, 14 aircraft found their way to the fledgling Flying Tiger line and provided a good start for that company. Automobiles In 1962, Bud produced a fully functional concept car, the XR400, for evaluation by American Motors Corporation AMC. It was designed to use AMC's existing chassis for the sporty model market segment before the introduction of the Ford Mustang. 
the proposed car did not enter production. An irony to the XR400 story is that Bud tried to sell the idea to Ford first. In 1961, Bud combined a 1957 Ford Thunderbird body with a 1961 Ford Falcon chassis to produce a sporty convertible. When Ford turned them down, Bud shifted focus to AMC. Ford went on to base the Mustang on the Falcon chassis. In 1965, Bud designed and manufactured a front disc brake system for Chrysler, Imperial, and full size Plymouth and Dodge automobiles, used optionally for the 1966 68 model years. <laughs> <laughs> Divisions and subsidiaries By the end of 1950s, Bud had the following divisions and subsidiaries, important suppliers of the U.S. aerospace and military industry Bud Lewitt Electronics, Inc. — Special Purpose Data Processing Systems, Communications Equipment, Instrumentation, Products for the Environmental Control of Electronic Equipment Tatnall Measuring Systems Division Physical testing equipment, metal film strain gauges, standard and custom load cells, and a unique photostress technique for direct strain measurements. Continental Diamond Fiber Corporation — Special high heat resistant materials for ablation applications, laminated and molded plastics, vulcanized fiber, and bonded mica in the form of sheets, rods, tubes and tapes. Defense Division Advanced aerospace and atomic structures, coupling a broad research and engineering capability with extensive prototype and production facilities. Nuclear Systems Division — Gamma radiography equipment for non-destructive testing of airframes, providing beam, panoramic and internal exposures in shop and field. Electronic Controls Section — Monavtronic resistance welding controls for the aircraft industry. Topic. Final years of railcar production Bud built two series of L cars for the Chicago Transit Authority, the 2200 series and the 2600 series they also built the New York City Subway R32 1964-1965, the first PATCO Speedline cars 1968-1969, and the Long Island Railroad Metro North Railroad M1 M3 1968-1973, 1984-1986. The Baltimore Metro and Miami Metrorail cars 1983 were built by Bud and marketed as Universal Transit Vehicle. Drawings of similar cars were also used in promotional material for the Los Angeles Metro Red Line. Stainless steel railcars were also built in Portugal by Sawfame, under license from Bud. Amtrak's 492 Amfleet I and 150 Amfleet II cars were built by Bud from 1975 to 1977 and 1981 to 1983. The Metroliner-based Amfleet body was recycled for usage in the SPV 2000, a modernized diesel passenger car which was very problematic, saw only four buyers Amtrak, ONCF, Metro-North and Connecticut Department of Transportation, and saw premature retirements within 15 years. The fallout from the SPV 2000 furthered the company's decline. In 1978, as Bud began to phase out its railcar business to concentrate on the automotive industry, it was acquired by Thyssen AG, becoming its automotive division, Thyssen Automotive in Europe and Bud Thyssen Company in North America. The CTA 2600 series cars were finished in 1987, and were the last railcars to be built by Bud, Transit America. In the mid-1980s, Bud reorganized its rail operations under the name Transit America, this name appearing on the builderplates of the Baltimore, Miami cars and Chicago's later order of 2600 series cars, but not the LIRR, MNCR M-3s. The new name did not save the company, and on April 3, 1987, Bud ended all railcar production at its Red Lion plant in Philadelphia and sold its rail designs to Bombardier Transportation. 
Many of its engineers joined the staff of the Philadelphia office of Louis T. Clauder & Associates, a local railway vehicles and systems engineering consulting firm. <laughs> Modern role in auto industry When Thyssen merged with Krupp in 1999, Bud Thyssen became ThyssenKrupp Bud Co. in North America and ThyssenKrupp Automotive Systems GmbH in Europe. In 2006, ThyssenKrupp sold the majority of its operations. Its body and chassis operations were sold to Martinrea International Inc. The plastics manufacturing and molding operations were sold to Continental Structural Plastics and aluminum casing company Stahl was sold to Speyside Equity. Its last remaining operation was sold in 2012. Preservation <inaudible> 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 Numerous Bud built railcars are preserved, either by museums or private owners, many of whom run them in charter service. Their quality of construction and elegant design have made them highly prized. <laughs> <laughs> Pennsylvania The Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania has a number of Bud built cars in its collection in Strasburg. The 1937 observation car built for the Reading Company, Crusader, a Lehigh Valley Railroad rail diesel car of 1951, and Pennsylvania Railroad 860, a Metroliner Sackbar coach built in 1968. The Bellefont Historical Railroad Society in Bellefont has two RDCs in its collection, number 5718, built in 1953 for the New Haven Railroad, and number 7001, built in 1961 for the Reading Railroad. <laughs> New York A 1949 R11 8013 and a 1964 R32 pair 3352-53 are in the New York Transit Museum fleet. Topic: <inaudible> Indiana. The Indiana Transportation Museum maintains a fleet of 14 closed window bud coaches built for the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe. Eight units are currently restored and are used in excursion service, including the Indiana State Fair train. ITMZ also operates the Silver Salon as a head end power car. Illinois <inaudible> 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 The Illinois Railway Museum is home to the Nebraska Zephyr articulated train, along with several Bud built passenger cars plus a pair of CTA 2200 series cars. Chicago's Museum of Science and Industry has housed the Pioneer Zephyr since its retirement from service in 1960. California The Western Pacific Railroad Museum at Portola, California features several Bud built cars from the California Zephyr, including Dome Lounge Car, Silver Hostel, and Diner, Silver Plate, as well as a Southern Pacific Bud Sleeping Car. <laughs> Missouri The St. Louis Museum of Transportation now owns former Zephyr Diner, Silver Spoon, as well as the Bud designed locomotive Silver Charger from the General Pershing Zephyr. Topic Massachusetts Bedford Depot, situated at the northwestern end of the Minuteman Bike Path, formerly the Lexington branch of the Boston and Maine Railroad, has a restored Bud rail diesel car number 6211. Portugal The National Railroad Museum at Entrancamento, Portugal features a pair of Bud cars built in 1940. Argentina 
There are several bud built coaches, combines, and buffet diner cars running in the Buenos Aires Mar del Plata corridor. They are run as a luxury service between the two cities during summer, when demand is highest. The coaches and combine are in their original condition, while the buffet diner car had to be partially remodeled after a fire. They were originally purchased by the Chesapeake and Ohio Railroad, but were sold before they could be used in revenue service. Currently, the train runs with one combine, three coaches and a buffet diner car, pulled by either an EMD GT22 or an English electric locomotive. Topic. Wind power In 1939, the Bud Company designed and fabricated the stainless steel skin for the blades of the Smith Putnam wind turbine, the largest wind turbine in the world for 40 years. Topic. Industrial facilities Bud Co. operated from multiple industrial facilities in the Philadelphia, Pennsylvania area. The company had a brick factory in Nicetown. An automobile parts factory on Hunting Park Avenue closed in 2002. The company moved its headquarters from Philadelphia to Troy, Michigan in 1972. In 2002, the company operated 39 factories with approximately 12,000 employees in North America. Topic. See also Bud Company Portal Slumbercoach Tokyo Car Corporation, member of licensee for stainless steel body manufacturing Joseph Ledwinker Commonwealth Engineering, Australian Bud licensee and manufacturer of rolling stock